Welcome back. Uh, still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now to our first major conversation. Now, just as the Osho State APC is about to hold its primary election in the state this Saturday, the internal wrangling in the state is far from over, as the former governor of the state, Ogbeni Ralph Arabeshola, and the incumbent governor, Boyega Oyetola, are at loggerhead Saturday battle for supremacy and control of the APC in the state. Now, there have been accusations from both sides against against each other. Uh, but joining us now to make some sense of this and to get to the bottom of this is um, Ismail Omipidon, who is the Chief Press Secretary uh, to the Governor Oyetola. Um, he's joining us right now from Oshobo, the Ocean State Capital. Good morning to you, Ismail Omipidon. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. The pleasure is mine. All right, fantastic. Um, uh, just give us a sense of what's been happening, um, uh, especially from your side uh, as spokesman of the governor. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, let me say that um, I listened very well to uh, some of the claims made by the former commissioner in the state, uh, who is also parading himself as the uh, secretary of a supposed uh, splinter group within the APC. Uh, my brother and good friend and a senior colleague, uh, Mr. Lani Baderewa. Uh, let me say with a sense of modesty that uh, governance uh, should not be about individual's interest. Governance should be about the interest of the gener generality of the people. And uh, if you look at what we have done in the last three years, we have proven beyond every reasonable doubt that indeed it was possible to run a state like Oshun with all its challenges in a depressed economy without necessarily inflicting more pains on the people. Uh, each time they speak, they talk about uh, my principal uh, eroding the what they call the legacies of uh, his predecessor. And I ask, what are those legacies we are talking about? Uh, are we talking about a legacy of half salary? Are we talking about a legacy of uh, single uniform? Are we talking about a legacy of a major of schools? What exactly are they talking about? If you look at uh, the reforms we carried out in the education sector. It was never, never targeted at anyone. It was meant to correct the mistakes of the past. In any case, every responsive and responsible government must make the demand and aspiration of the people the center of its policy. Uh, in the build up to the 2018 election, uh, apart from the issue of uh, half salary, one other issue that dominated the campaign was the issue of single uniform. And virtually all the aspirants, except Oyetola, made it clear during their campaigns openly that they were going to reverse those policies, including Adioti, that our former governor is parading today. The records are there for everybody to see. And for them to have concluded that they were going to reverse that policy, what that meant was that the policy was probably not popular with the people. In any case, when we came in in 2018, uh, apart from the fact that during the, one of the governorship uh, debates uh, hosted by the Chinese television, where my principal was put on the spot as per the issue of single uniform major schools. Uh, he tried to defend the policy and he tried to explain the rationale behind the introduction of the policy. But then he was asked pointedly, if you become governor, will you reverse that policy? And what he said was that if indeed the people wanted the policy looked into, that he believes that there's no policy that is casting iron, that if he becomes governor, and if it is the wish of the people to have a second look at that policy, he will be looking at it. And when he became governor, he embarked on a thank you tour around the state. Apart from 
the issue of roads that the people were asking for, one of the other things they asked for was a review of that single uniform. Again, there was a citizen needs assessment that was carried out by the UK DFID. Top on the list of the needs of the people of the state was a view of that single uniform. So we now sat down as a government to look at what these issues are. Apart from the issue of security, because for people who may not know, before we came in, the entire schools in Oshun were using the same uniform. So by implication, you cannot differentiate between school A from school B. That is one. Two, the measure of schools meant that schools that were meant for only girls were being attended by boys. So by implication, we had students who are, for example, you will have a John Mayaki carrying a certificate of girls' high school. So there were a lot of contradictions. And so when we now came in, the first cabinet meeting that was held in November, without prompting, the Ministry of Education came up with about 46 items to be reviewed in the ministry. And top on those lists were this issue of single uniform, major schools, and what have you. Left for the cabinet, they wanted the matter discussed that same day and decision taken. So Mr. Governor said no, that let us invite experts to take a holistic view at this policy. And that was what led us into setting up the panel led by a foremost educationist, Professor Oluaina. That panel had seasoned educationists, including uh, Professor Pai Obanya. Uh, we had former JAM registrar. We had uh, Prof Professor Bida Obe. We had uh, our other statesman, uh, the former chief of defense staff, Lieutenant General Lani Akikade. These were prominent persons who sat on that committee. And at the end of the day, they recommended that, one, that it, that Oshun cannot be operating as an island. According to the report of the committee, that in the entire 36 states of the Federation, Oshun was the only state that was operating an education policy that was at variance with that of the federal government. For example, we debated from the 6334 system of education, which we all know is the, is the norm all over you know, the country. They went further to recommend that the major of schools should be, uh, the, the schools should be demerged and that schools should begin to put on their old uniform. Let me also add that stakeholders, old boys association, even took the government to court over the change of uh, uh, school name and their uniform. So it was the agitation, the demand by the people that these things be looked into. That was what led us okay. into okay. You know, reviewing these things. Okay. Uh, 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 we, we have to, um, uh, Mr. Ismail Omidi, Omipi Don, we have to take a break now. Not a break, but let's go over and uh, listen to some of the things that were said uh, yesterday by Adelani Baderiwa, who is the Secretary of the Ocean State APC, though you've said he's parading himself. And uh, interesting, you've pointed out the fact that uh, these po policy changes were not because uh, the current governor, Oyotela, wanted to um, change or discard his... Um, predecessors policies but it was born out of a, a consultation you know needs assessment and even uh think tanks were set up to 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 analyze and look into do we uh, keep the five three or the four five three four that um uh, uh, the former governor brought on board and the single uniform policy or do we change it but let's go over and uh, take a recap of what um uh, the secretary to the ocean state apc albeit a faction like you called it adelani baderinwa uh, said to us on plus tv at the breakfast yesterday i do not think he attacked them he only stated his own side of the case Everybody okay. has been saying that, yes, he picked, uh, Ashwaju picked him from the daughters. And I am aware that this is a man who, to a large extent, was self-made to a certain extent before, you know, he and Bolatino who met. And by the time they met, he was contesting for the House of Representatives for a Limoshofera constituency. When 
actually was contesting for the Senate seat for Lagos West. That was where they met, under the purview of Chief Dakosha Sarumi, who had the Primrose Group then. And with that, he saw the innate capacity in him. And that was the reason why he, you know, attracted him to his side. I think it would be out of place for anybody to say that he, he brought me from the gutters. I do not think it makes sense. And so he has to state his own side of the case, which he stated very well, you know, that, yes, this is the situation between us. And I didn't see it as an attack. All right, that's um, uh, the... Uh as the man who we had on the show yesterday, um, of course, the Secretary of the APC in Oshio State, uh, Mr. Ismail Umipido, uh, one of the things uh, he said uh, was that, um, you know, former Governor Ralph Ayabeshala is not, um, uh, doesn't have any interest in, in controlling the state. He just simply feels that as a card carrying member of the All Progressives Congress, um, he should contribute to the development of the party, not be sidelined. And also, you've, you've addressed the issue of um, uh, uh, destroying the legacy of, of, of the former governor, Araofa Rebeshola. You've said that's not true. But how about sidelining uh, Rebeshola and, of course, not, not giving him uh, a free room to also participate in the activities of the party? You look at the, miss, um, uh, the complaints of the Oshu Progressives right from the ward congresses to the local government congresses and now we have um uh, the state congresses and now we have the primaries of the party holding um what do you say to this allegation of you know sidelining such a, a member of the party who's an important person in the party uh, thank you very much uh, i don't really understand what you meant by sidelining but i will give uh, one major instance to prove to the whole world that uh, from the one we set out to carry our former governor along in all that we do. Uh, when uh, the party started its uh, revalidation exercise, uh, you can verify whatever I'm saying, even by uh, punching the net. Uh, after President Mohamed Buhari's uh, revalidation exercise, uh, the next person that had its own done was uh, our leader uh, Baba, the former governor of the state chief bc akande and uh, because the governor accompanied the delegation from abuja to ila where chief bc akande had his uh, revalidation done the committee also moved with my principal to his country home in Ragbiji to have his own revalidation exercise done. Uh, after that, we came back to Shubu, the state capital. And by the next day, or thereabout, I wasn't told I was there with my principal. My principal put a call through to our former governor to inform him that uh, Baba Kande has done his revalidation exercise. And that on the day Baba Kande had his, was the same day I had mine. You are the next person we are looking at to have your own done. And we are looking at, uh, was it either a Monday or a Tuesday? I can't remember now. And the next thing our former governor said was that the day we were proposing was not convenient for him, that he was going to travel with uh, Mr. President to either Casina or Cardinal, I can't remember now. And that from there, he was going to go to Quara with uh, the Minister of Information, uh, Lai Mohamed. But that he was going to give my principal 48 hours notice. I repeat, he was going to give my principal 48 hours notice to inform him of when he wants to come and have his civilization exercise. For about a week or so, we didn't hear from our former governor. But by the weekend or so, we just had him in, in, in Elisha saying that some persons were trying to block him from carrying out his revitalization exercise. So how else can someone be carried along? And that was where he said uh, unpredictable things about my principal, about the government he runs. So I don't know 
how best you can carry one along. I'm talking specifically about our congresses. Usually, when Congress, when planning for Congresses are going on, you hold stakeholders meeting, you brainstorm. I am aware that about two days to the commencement of the World Congress, the then secretary of the party, who today is parading himself as the chairman of uh, a splinter group, uh, Honorable Razak Salinshile, was at the party secretariat to confer with the party chairman, Prince Boy Modu. I wasn't at the meeting, I had no access, so I didn't know what they discussed. And so, but surprisingly, by uh, Friday, when we had the stakeholders meeting, they stayed away from the stakeholders meeting. Nobody prevented them from attending the stakeholders meeting. The next thing they said was that because the stakeholders meeting was held at the government house, nobody could have allowed them access to the government house. And I said, that is not correct. Did you make any effort to attend the meeting? Now, and we had that meeting at the government house to prevent our people from going through unnecessary hardship because we were working on a major intersection, Olaya Bridge. And we knew that if we were to hold the stakeholders meeting at the party secretariat, we would have to block some roads because of the presence of Mr. Governor and other dignitaries. And so we felt that doing that may cause unnecessary uh, hardship on our people. And okay, so but, but let's quickly come in there for the want of time. Um, the, the major yeah. issue, yes, I know that you have also talked about um, Aregwa Shola here on the other hand saying, well, your Tola has actually destroyed the eight works and you have talked about the legacy. But you still have some persons in Oshun State who are saying this is actually the truth because nothing has been done by your, um, I mean, talking about the governor, the incumbent governor right now, nothing really has been done apart from maybe um, uh, the flyovers and that's the only thing you can talk about. So can you categorically <laughs> tell us, you know, the achievement of um, the current incumbent governor in your state? Thank you very much. Uh, first, we have done, uh, we, 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 we started uh, with the rehabilitation of 332 primary health care centers, one per ward across the state. And as I speak to you, we have completed at least 320 of those primary health care centers. Again, uh, the uh, general hospitals, we have fixed a number of them too. As a matter of fact, one of them that we fixed is situated in the Jibu, where the former speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Najim Salam, comes from. And the day we were to inaugurate that project, the traditional ruler of uh, the area, the Uginya, he said that when we came to uh, lay the foundation, that he thought it was one of those gimmicks. But I was surprised that within one year that the hospital came on stream. And let me also place on record that we thank God that we started with the healthcare sector. How do I mean? We never knew COVID was coming when uh, we started investing in our health sector. But for our heavy investment in that sector, uh, COVID-19 would have cut us uh, hands down. Again, the road leading to uh, leading from Oshobo to Ejibo. Ejibo is where the former speaker comes from. He was speaker for eight years under a bachelor. They could not fix that road. As I speak to you, we have fixed that road. Again, there is a road at the Ibajo Road. That road had been abandoned for over 30 years. As I speak to you, we have fixed that road. The, uh, the Moro Road. Lieutenant General King, you know him very well. He's not a frivolous speaker. According to him, he said the last time that road was touched was about 44 years ago. As I speak to you, we have fixed that road. So it is not correct for anybody to begin to say that apart from flyover, we have not done anything. You can send your team down to come and verify my claim. Apart from building infrastructures, 
we are also making frantic efforts to diversify the economy. As I speak to you, uh, before we came in, the state held on to 17 mining licenses for years. Until we came in about three years ago, that we started investing heavily in that sector. As I speak to you, a gold buying center is coming on stream in Ocean. And so it is not correct for anybody to say that apart from the flyover, we have not done anything. I think if you notice in all their conversation, even the top members, they have not been able to afford my principal on the area of performance. All they are talking about is personal interest. And so it is not correct for anybody to claim that we have not done anything. Hmm. As I speak to you, we feed 30,000 vulnerable persons in the state on a monthly basis. Our health insurance scheme is one of the best in the region and about the second in the country. These are claims that you can verify. So, so the, 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 there are some quarters that are still arguing to... that, you know, up until now, the same sum, uh, you have the issue of the water pollution uh, in Oshun State. Can you quickly tell us what government is doing to address that and if uh, there's something to go by? There is, there is no... Uh, any case of water pollution. I'm sure you are trying to talk about the Elisha Waterworks. Uh, that is another politics they were trying to play uh, with that project. And the politics started, uh, I think, about a month ago or so. And thankfully, all the claims they made as far as the project was concerned, including the claim that uh, my principal had sacked the project consultant, who was hired by the former governor, whom we inherited, the project consultant has said, came on air to despair the claim. And as I speak to you, the water project is on course. And by the grace of God, it will be delivered. Okay. Uh, 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 Mr. Mipino, very lastly, very quickly, in one sentence, um, the, the supporters and loyalists of um, Ralph Rebecca have said the governor, Boyga Oyatala, your principal, is using the police to, um, to malign the image um, of, of, of the, the former governor. You know, I'm re referring to the shooting incident where the police uh, and the CP in Osho State came out to say, uh, put the blame squarely on the security attached to the convoy of the former governor, who is currently the Minister of Interior. Um, what do you say to this? Uh, I will challenge you to ask your reporter on ground to send you the video clips of the so-called shooting. And if you watch the video, uh, I'm sure uh, you will be able to say whether what I want to say is true or not. As far as the Monday shooting was concerned, those who shot, according to the police report, and even according to eyewitnesses, there were people around the area, uh, people around the Jegule, people around the old garage, people around the Kepia. These are human beings that you can interact with. It was the, those in the entourage of the minister that were shooting. In fact, in the video, you will hear the interior minister telling them to be on their alert. Now, they claim he was attacked. Is it possible for someone to be attacked? Someone who was in an open roof, is it possible for him to be attacked and he will still be standing in that open roof? Go and check the video very well. So it is not correct. If anything, they are the ones that have been using the personnel of the civil defense to terrorize and intimidate the people of the state. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Ismail Lumipi Don is the Chief Press Secretary uh, to Osho State Governor Boyega Oyetola. He's been our guest um, on this uh, segment of uh, Breakfast. Thank you very much for your time, sir. The pleasure is mine. God bless. All right. And we do hope uh, uh, there will be a peaceful party primary um, come Saturday and that uh, uh, best man will win, um, of course, with integral by democracy the, by, the, by the grace of God, the primary will come and go peacefully. And from the display of support from the leaders, stakeholders, and elders of the party, including the deputy governor that served our former governor, all of them are with the governor. Thank you. And that tells you that the majority are with us. And by the grace of God, we'll see we about will that. Be <laughs> we'll see about that. Thank you very much, Ismail Mipido. And that's uh, the much you can take on that uh, particular issue. We'll be watching. Of course, uh, Plus TV will be on ground right there at uh, the APC primary in Oshio State. We'll be right back to talk some more. Um, the EFCC is talking tough uh, on a government, a public official over some amount of money that uh, said to have been looted. We'll look at this when we return. Stay with us.